everyone. Welcome to another episode of Five on the Front Line, produced by AIHA. I'm your host, Mark Ames. Every day, workers are exposed to hazards both at and outside of work. These exposures combine in complex ways to impact workers' health and safety. Understanding these interactions is called total exposure health, which is what we'll explore today. Our guest is Kirk Phillips. Kirk is an expert with more than 29 years of experience in assessing and mitigating workplace exposure risks, and he leads AIHA's Total Exposure Health Advisory Group. Welcome to the show, Kirk. Mark, thank you very much. Kirk, total exposure health sounds pretty complex. Can you break it down for us? I really can. The, the easiest thing is to realize it's a framework, and as a framework, it means you get to fill your frame with what you want to fill. So you have a population you're taking care of, you're going to want to consider how you really can help that population. That involves all the normal things you do with industrial hygiene and probably everything you were taught that sometimes you didn't just get to. Okay, that's that's a pretty good summary. Thank you. So it sounds like total worker health, excuse me, total exposure health, if I'm getting it right, is a framework which aims to increase worker health and safety by making sense of exposures on the job and outside of work. The next question is, what is total exposure health mean in practice for workers, employers, and other communities served by occupational environmental health and safety professionals? Appreciate that. And you know, this is going to be a great uh, five minute uh, start. You mentioned total worker health and really as total exposure health, we're able to meet all of total worker health's desires for exposure based uh, inputs. And so it's a great partnership to do total worker health, with total exposure health. I'm going to give you a quick story. Um, everybody's unique and an individual, and I look fairly normal to you, but at one point I was going to be a midget. And they found out that there's a correlation between exercise, rest, and sleep on how your hormones release. And by mapping mine, they were able to find the high points. I set up a daily schedule to match those high points, essentially a control, and I grew. And I grew to a normal adult height. But um, without somebody thinking of me as an individual, that would have never happened. And these are the kinds of things. And you would say, you might say, wow, that, that's really modern science. Well, I'm an old man. That was in the 80s that we were needing to get me growing. So that's a long time ago, really, from a, from a medical science standpoint. But science has actually moved on to where they don't just have to guess what it was, but they can now know genomically what it is. So what is total exposure health? It is bringing this modern industrial in the fourth revolution, as we call it, medicine and technology into industrial hygiene. Sensors, as you know, are getting smaller. We can sample more places and more people at a lower cost. So getting the data now is possible. We also have the Internet of Things. And as the Internet of Things, we can go grab tests that show us a lot of exposures out there. If I want to know what somebody's exposed to driving into work, I can get that as an, a pretty good estimate today. And so as I think about how we can essentially look at exposures in individuals, we realize that we can do so much more in understanding their exposure. If that's all you do to add to your frame, you've done terrific. But you can also add other things into your frame and it's coming, so we should be prepared. In today's day and age, you can get for $99 a genetic test that gives you 77 different exposure-based uh, implications of whether you have a genetic prevalence to disease from that exposure. The time is only coming before you have somebody ask you, hey, I'm more susceptible to noise for hearing loss, noise-induced hearing loss. What are you going to do for me? Following the law and just meeting the legal limit, we already know 20% of the people aren't protected by that. So we have an obligation to do something. But guess what? That 20%, we're in understanding what it is that can be done for them. If you want to, you can just add double double hearing protection, or maybe some time limitations. Maybe asking the question, do you have quiet time at night? We also have new um, controls that are coming. They're not quite here yet, but they're in testing, and that's pre-exposure prophylaxis. That's a pill, basically something the doctor would give. You would tell the doctor they have a, a noise problem, and uh, the doctor would give them some medicine and before their exposure. They'd take a pill. Wow, what an amazing control. We now can treat that individual no longer as unique because the control applied beyond our um, you know, profession is doing everything we need to do. 
That sounds fantastic. Super interesting. I wonder, uh, we are up on time, but I wonder if you wouldn't mind coming back to talk about the, what smaller businesses can take away from Total Exposure Health. Uh, would, you, would you agree to come back? Absolutely. Excellent. Fantastic. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for coming on the show, Kurt. Thank you. And thanks everyone for joining us. Five on the Front Line is produced by AIHA. Subscribe to our YouTube and podcast podcast.co channels to catch the latest expertise from our frontline industrial hygiene and OEHS science professionals. I'm Mark Ames wishing you a safe and healthy day ahead.